Hey everybody. I had some time last fall to go out to my favorite place in the Virginia mountains, um, Crabtree Falls. So this is a scene that is, Crabtree Falls is the largest um, continuous waterfall east of the Mississippi. So it's pretty dramatic. This is the lower end of it. You can pretty much hike here without any legs really because it's you can even take a wheelchair to this little accessible ramp. It's only about a 200 yard um, walk on a paved path to here, to this location. Um, you can take a larger hike if you want to go to the top. It's about three miles to the top of the um, waterfall. Well, I think it's like 2.6 or something like that. If you look up the information on it, you'll probably find that I'm wrong, but I'm just giving you a little, you know, quick synapses of what Crabtree Falls is. It's a pretty awesome place. It's located just inside of um, Nelson County as you come over from Lexington from Vesuvius towards um, uh, Charlottesville. It's a really cool little fall. Um, here, I, this is my second session in it with it because I started this a week before this scene in the final hours of the day, final hour of the day. So really only had about 35 minutes 40 minutes to paint the original first block in. So this is picking up from that first block in a week later. I was able to come back. So um, here I'm still analyzing the values. I wanted to catch, when I got back, I remember I wanted to catch a little bit more wet water falling over the rocks, over the main rocks that are behind that tree. I'll get to the tree here in just a little bit, so stay tuned. So right now I'm just adjusting some value or adjusting some shapes. I like to work um, big shapes to smaller shapes. Um, it keeps me focused on keeping it um, simple. The time that you start to get into tiny little shapes, it can get too monotonous and too, um, too much detail. So. I try to keep my detail out until the end of the painting. I think that's where I am able to um, put my attention to at the end versus trying to complete or finish a whole section of the painting right away at, at, at its from the start to the finish in one little section. So I try to work the whole painting that way. For me, it kind of seems to seems to work better. So I'm just looking. All right, so now I want to mix up some of this background um, color that's behind the tree limb that's right there in front. So there's some leaves that are right well in a distant background behind those some leaves that are coming off the tree. So I'm trying to carve out a little bit of dark earth value in between the um, leaves that are in the foreground that are coming off that tree. So um, I was using, I didn't have any straight ultramarine blue, so I had to augment my um, palette a little bit, palette a little bit on this painting with some um, oh, Vasari colors that I no, had I in my toolbox. It's always good to have a few extra 
tubes in the tubes of color in the toolbox for this scenario. But I hardly ever use them. But they're still fun to have. So um, here I am getting a little bit darker value and just carving out some leaves along the tree. Here I'm getting ready to add some leaves that are on the, the rocks that were have fallen in the last day or a couple of days. Um, this is the second pass, second plein air session of this painting. I came um, literally one week earlier than today when I came, went up there and did this. And I didn't have time, I ran out of light last week so I um, I wanted to get back out here this season before all the leaves were gone from all the trees so I'm kind of glad I made it back within a week because there wasn't much change but there had just been enough change to give some interest on the leaves that are on the rocks as they're coming down now as you can kind of see in the background and the scene. There are some leaves on those rocks that are orangey, green, various shades of orange on, on the, in the leaves. So made for an interesting scene and I'm kind of playing with that tree trunk. It gets more texture in it. And because um, that's kind of a it's not a focal point but it's an obvious piece in the painting. Sometimes you don't want to bring too much interest to something, so it's very easy to overpaint it. So I'm trying to take careful notion of not to overpaint that tree trunk because I don't want it to draw attention away from the water. And um, I think the way um, I'm going to handle the water here in just a little bit is a little edgy and uh, I use a, a knife for the water a lot so it kind of pulls interest to the water anyway because it's a knife, palette knife and the palette knife always leaves nice edges everywhere so I am taking that into consideration when I'm painting this tree so I can get a little more texture on the tree than a normal tree because of the texture that I will be putting in the water. wanting to talk about this water now there's some distant water that's way up there that's falling that's a little bit more in distance than the water that's in the foreground so you need to water the warm the water up 
from the water that's in the foreground. So, and you don't want to ever use straight white. Using straight white in oil paint is, um, it just, I would advise against it. Um, I would mix a little bit of, um, depending on what value you're looking for, the brightest white, you would still have some yellow and some red in it because white is cooler than yellow and red. So you want to add the red and the yellow just the tiniest, minuscule, like less than a teardrop of each of those to get a really blatant white, bright white, whiter than white. Um, so you need to cool the rest of those whites down just a little bit. So it's going to be a little dirtier. It's going to have a little more blue and a little more red in it. So, um, so white that's kind of not as strong. The water that's not as strong as white you'll use for the darker version of the white. And then you'll use the really bright white where it hits the rocks to be the lightest light. And on this white here that I'm using, I'm using an oil cane knife and um, I'm kind of just kind of letting it fall down as I'm, I'm using a real light hand when I'm grazing the surface of the canvas with my fully loaded palette knife. Uh, and, and when I load a palette knife with a lot of color, it, it just kind of grazes the canvas in a, a specific way that makes it unique and cool. So, and you also want to make, add a little lyrical, kind of a symphony of um, story that is, um, creates interest in your, in your pattern. So it's kind of like building a pattern that goes up. Have a lot of fun with it. I'm bringing in the palette knife and laying in some heavier impasto on um, on the water that's falling. Right there, that was it. That's the little background part of the fall, falls that is way up there. So it's like a cascading crab tree is like a cascading falls that um, just keeps going and going and going. There's some areas that it gets a less less rocks, but there are other areas. I have never been all the way up to the top, surprisingly. Which is one of my goals before I'm 50. Just to make a make a hiking trip. Which 50 is coming up pretty soon. So maybe I'll get it done this summer. My big old butt would get out of the way and let you guys see the painting. So I'm bringing interest to the side just a little bit there just to give some context to that big rock being closer to us and uh, further away.
and I'm on the final like two percent here coming up. This final last couple of seconds or last couple of minutes of the painting is where I really stop and walk around and let my eye rest just a little bit. Get back from the painting, look at it from a distance, take photos, look at it from a distance from another angle. Sometimes I'll flip it around and then um, really start to analyze everything. I used to smoke a cigarette at this point just to kind of get away and look at it from my phone. But I quit smoking, thankfully, this year. Hopefully it'll stick. About the 15th time I've tried to quit. Anyway, um, I'm just putting some final touches on some of the... I'm just trying to say a little bit more poetic fall of the water here. And, um, getting some final detail, laying in some heavier, heavier tone. If you guys like this painting and you'd like to see more, um, I invite you to come over to my website. Um, my website is thomasbradshaw.net. And there you'll see other paintings of mine that I have in the collection. Uh, plein air paintings, um, some landscape paintings, and some seascapes. So hopefully you will check it out. And um, I hope to see you further on down the road. This painting is available on the website, so if you'd like to get more information on it, please just go to my website, thomasbradshaw.net, and I will see you guys there. Should be fun. Take care. Thanks for sticking this out. Um, I can't say that enough. I appreciate my audience. I appreciate all my collectors and all the other artists that really respect my work. Um, takes a, I don't like to paint too many pretty scenes, but this is kind of a, kind of a pretty scene, but I like to paint just what strikes my eye. You know, we're always looking for different things to catch our eye and um, those things resonate a little bit stronger than normal. So, take care. Peace, brothers. We'll see you next time. Thanks for sticking it out. Bye-bye.